Hey guys, hey, it's Matthew. Uh, we are going to be recording um, a video regarding quiz five questions. Let me bring those up really quick. So quiz five. So the first question is why is Flash no longer used? Hint, Apple founder and and huh. <laughs> it looks like I have some syntax or some uh, gr grammatical errors in this question. Uh, but essentially, Flash was killed by Steve Jobs, the Apple founder. Uh, he found Flash to be clunky. And so that sort of moved HTML in a new sort of direction towards animation. But like, say, like 10, 15 years ago, um, Flash was a very big deal and you could go, I had a friend of mine who was, um, you know, living in San Francisco, coding Flash and working at a marketing firm and doing quite well for himself. And, uh, but then Flash died and then, you know, things had to change. So yeah, uh, Steve Jobs was the guy that killed Flash essentially because he refused to allow it to be on his Apple machines. Um, second question. How would you place a hosted YouTube or video, or excuse me, Vimeo video on your site? Well, uh, if we go to my YouTube page and click on a video, and then I'm going to click right here. So let's see. We don't need to watch it. So hold on one second. Pause this. So uh, if you click on share, and then you click on embed, what you'll find is the iframe code, okay, that you can plant onto a website, okay? And so if I turn around, actually, uh, so here you should have this available to you, this example five. I'm going to uncompress it really quickly so that we can take a look. Here's the index, right click, open. Um, so here is a YouTube video of mine embedded on the website. And if I open this up in brackets, here is the code. So there's that iframe code that uh, was placed and is currently rendering this video right there. Sort of the, sort of the story behind Okay. And it's kind of fun because you can also modify the dimensions. Of course, you have to do it uh, appropriately with the aspect ratio, but that's how you embed a video, a YouTube or Vimeo video on your website. Okay. So um, briefly describe the HTML5 code that is used to embed a video. Okay. Well, sometimes you have... Um, like in this example that I've given you, there is actually a video here and it's it's included in the zipped file. It's actually a video of me doing a drawing like uh, 10, 15 years ago, quite a, quite a while ago. But it was one of the smaller videos that I had that I thought would be fun to include. So anyway, I just called it video.mp4. And if you look up here, there's the opening tag with some attributes associated with it. And then there's a line for the source. So video.mp4, I don't know if you guys can see that, video.mp4. This, of course, is called video.mp4. So we're just connecting the dots. And um, by default, uh, it renders. So that's this guy right there, okay? And we can even hit play and kind of see it's a time lapse of me working on a drawing quite a few years ago. So it is working. Same thing with uh, this music.mp3 because I believe that the next question was asking about audio. Uh, yes, briefly describe the HTML5 code that is used to embed an mp3 on your website. So that's here. Here's audio controls. Then here's the source. Okay. And the name of the mp3 is just music.mp3. If we look in the folder, look, it's called music.mp3 so that the index can find those files easily. And then it closes out. 
and then it is in fact rendering just fine it's a four non blondes track from the 90s that i'm kind of fond of it's fun to listen to so um these files are they have to be nearby this last video can be hosted somewhere in the cloud and embedded on your website with an iframe uh, the next thing I want to show you is um, a little bit of like introduction to CSS, right? So, but let's not uh, um, avoid these questions. Let's see. Um, do you have a YouTube or Vimeo account? Why or why not? That's just like a fun question. Obviously, I have a YouTube account that I use uh, to upload um, instructional videos and just, you know, helpful things. What is CSS? What does CSS stand for? Be, be detailed. So CSS um, is the yin. It's basically, you know, there's HTML and CSS. That's the yin and the yang, okay? And so HTML is the structure and CSS is the aesthetic, how it looks, okay? And it stands for cascading style sheets. Uh, and so we're going to be getting into that. And very briefly, I just kind of want to walk you guys through what's going on. So I did include, there's a connection between this index slash five and this styles.css. So if I open this up, uh, this is very, very important. So pay attention to this detail, please. Uh, I linked that here. And you can see CSS slash styles.css. And that's in this, fold, this folder called CSS. And then the, the document is called styles.css. So I've kind of set it up for you. I've set up the precedent, but I definitely want you guys to take notice that the only way that, that those two guys have to be talking to each other in order for this to work, okay? And so um, just kind of take note of that and maybe even keep this stuff as a precedent or an example to copy the code and use it later, right? That's that's what web designers and developers do. They, they're not reinventing the wheel here. They're sort of building their kingdom uh, upon you know, other people's expertise. So um, now I'm gonna, you can actually open up the styles.css as well. So this is kind of fun. You can see these two guys right next door. And I want you to take notice that I've assigned some CSS to um, to assign all of the typeface or hel or uh, characters as being Arial or Helvetica or sans serif, okay? And in, you can kind of see like I'm I'm talking to anything that's in the body, okay? So all of this content, like you know, for example, this paragraph in H3, that's going to be a sans serif Helvetica or Arial typeface because I told it to be that right here, okay? I also mentioned that I want the entire body background color to be light gray. Well, when you when you open this up and look at it, there's this kind of like real beautiful kind of soft light gray thing happening. That was told, that, that was instructed by the, the CSS file, okay? Uh, additionally, I wanted the H3 to have that particular color and I'm using an R RGB method, okay? RGB stands for red, green, blue. And if we go back, look at, I mean, I know the legibility is really difficult to see, but here it says, this is some example paragraph text that is styled by CSS. Okay. And if we go back now, uh, so here's the paragraph text, and then here's the H3. Maybe I got that upside down, because I think that's the paragraph text, and that's the H3. Interesting. So in any case, there's the H3 command and then the paragraph command, okay? And here I'm using a hex. Those, those six digits indicate color in the web world, okay? And that's why these are not just plain old black, but you know I've in fact given them some fun color. It's not exactly legible against that space, that light space gray, but I just kind of wanted to show you, you know, an introduction to CSS, very, very brief. Um, Let's go ahead and go back to our quiz questions. So uh, we talked about CSS. What is the difference between an HTML element and a style rule? Well, I mean, we can sort of guesstimate like these, uh, these two, two guys are HTML uh, 
stop, you know, th those that's HTML. That's really what you need to know. This is the HTML. That's the yin. Okay. And the yang is over here telling the HTML how it should look. And that's really what this is asking. <clears throat> and what is the difference between the two? Uh, the next question, describe the difference between internal and external styling. Uh, which do I prefer to use? I think that's another grammatical error, apologies. Which do you prefer to use and which is be uh, best practice? So essentially, I think I may have talked about this in the video, but in general, you should keep your style, your style sheet separate. That's good practice. And there is, you can do inline styling. And by the way, I did also include these um, at W3 schools. They have some beautiful pages on uh, HTML audio, HTML video, HTML iframes. And the last one I wanted to show you was, um, so we just were looking at external CSS because there's an external style sheet where we've put the commands, the CSS commands. Okay. But that being said, you can put CSS commands um, in the head portion of the document. It is frowned upon to do that. Okay. And so I, I won't be really showing you that because I don't want you to develop bad habits. So in general, do not put CSS commands in your HTML document. CSS commands should be separate the way that these guys are separate. All this is separate. That's CSS and this is HTML. You can even see styles.css is the file name. Index slash five dot HTML is the file name. They're two separate entities, yin and yang. They complement each other, okay? Um, what is a CSS selector? Okay, I, th I think this is um, a very valuable, I'm, I'm looking in the textbook and I believe it's page 237. And so there are just a number of ways that you can target HTML elements and tags with CSS. And I think it's a really good plan to look at uh, those, those, it looks like it's 237 and 238 and it says CSS selectors. But if you look at those two pages, that will really kind of um, map things out. But the, the real truth is we've, we've actually talked about a couple of these before. Remember when we were talking about IDs and classes? Those are CSS selectors. So I can use an ID or a class selector to target a very specific HTML tag or element so that I can essentially kind of get surgical because the, what I'm doing here on this page, it's more broad. I'm targeting all of the paragraph text. I'm targeting all of the H3s, but you can actually use a scalpel and you can get more specific when you start using CSS selectors. And that's what it's introducing there, okay? Um, why is cascading and inheritance so important to understand as you move forward with more advanced web school skills? Well, cascading, CSS stands for cascading style sheets. And so there's an order of operations to the commands. So for example, what if in this style sheet, I give paragraph, I in two separate circumstances, I tell the paragraph text to be one color and then a whole different color. Well, the computer is going to read the last command for that paragraph text. And essentially what that means, and it's, and it's something that you should be aware of, is that you know, sometimes these CSS commands, they can collide and they can, call, they can cause problems in your, in your, um, your code thinking. Uh, that's really you know, what that is starting to allude to, okay? That's enough for now. Thanks, guys. That was quiz five. I, I hope you guys are having fun. Bye-bye.